Hey there guys, Pajama Prepper here, KC1CWP. In this video, I'm going to show you my first homebrew antenna that I built today. And then I'm going to uh, do another video after. I'm going to mount it and we're going to test it out. Uh, but this is a scanner antenna and I'm going to test it out using my sacrificial scanner. <laughs> but in any regard, this is a great project if you're new to ham radio. Uh, or Well, you don't need to be a ham to use a scanner. This is a great fun project using parts that are readily available. Uh, and it costs about $30 or so. So sure, you could, you know, uh, buy a antenna just as good for that. But I wanted a project to do. So 30 bucks well spent, okay? The experience alone is definitely worth it if you've never done it. It's definitely good to get into it, okay? Um, what you're going to need, tool-wise, you're going to need a pipe cutter that can cut both PVC or PEX pipe, which is what I used, and copper pipe as well. Okay, you see, so you need a pipe cutter, preferably the one that you spin around the pipe and you keep tightening it, one of those from Cobalt or whatever, you use one of those. Don't use a saw. Okay, you're then going to need a drill and a 1 8 drill bit. You're also going to need <clears throat> a Sharpie, a tape measure. The Sharpie is going to be used to mark the points for cutting and drilling, tape measure to measure the lengths, uh, possibly a rubber mallet, uh, and zip ties and screws. Okay, so let's go over this here. Two sections of copper pipe, half inch. It's half inch copper pipe. Okay, that area is 19 inches long, or that piece there, excuse me, 19 inches long. This one here is 48.5. Okay, weird numbers. I know, those are my numbers. From the diagrams I looked at and other people who have built this, they do 18 and 48. I cut it a little longer for my own benefit in case I do need to shorten it. If I cut it 17 or if I cut it too short, I would have to start over with a new piece of copper. Copper pipe is not very expensive, but it's not very cheap. I'm not going to keep going to Lowe's to buy more. Okay. Um, so in any case, I'm just not in the business of wasting money. <laughs> what I've done with this one is in some designs, they have two screws here that hold the copper pipe into the T, the T connector. Some people, here's the mistake they make. They use a Schedule 40 PVC connector. I used a PEX pipe connector, okay? And this is PEX pipe as well. <clears throat> PEX pipe is just much more flexible. It's usually for water and stuff like that, uh, like routing. Much more I, just look into it. It's good stuff. Um, if you're in, like, tiny house builds and stuff, check out PEX pipe. Um, but what I've done is instead of... Uh, it's a pretty firm grip it has on it, but what I've done as well is I've not secured it for the purpose of being able to essentially take it apart. What I can do is, again, i got to loosen the other one up and take it out, is I can go like this, put some elastic bands around it or some Velcro ties, and store it in an area so much smaller than if I had to keep it like this. Granted, I could, you know, just loosen up the screws and whatever when I needed, but that seems silly when I could just break it down in a matter of seconds. That just seems a lot more uh, beneficial and better to me for field use, okay? Um, what we have is a 75 to 300 ohm ballon, or transformer is what Radishack calls it. Then over here, connected to that, I have a uh, uh, the connector, to the adapter, I forget what this N type connector, I think, to BNC. This allows me to use that BNC male-to-male -male jumper. It's a six-foot jumper to connect this to a scanner. <clears throat> then I just zip-tied that on there to keep it in place. Uh, I did use one screw here to secure the mounting arm. Okay. Uh, and other than that, okay, what you're going to do with this, okay, the, you're going to drill the two holes there with the one-eighth drill bit. But the screws, well, the bolts I used, they're little tiny stainless steel machine bolts. Okay, they are a bigger diameter than one eighth, so the hole is smaller than it. Don't file it out to get it to the right size. Just wiggle the thing in there a bit. Get your screwdriver, whatever. Use a screwdriver. If you use this, what's going to happen is you're going to put too much torque behind it. It's going to wiggle around. It's going to scrape the crap out of the pipe, and then you're going to have to polish it. Okay, because that, that did happen with this, even with a screwdriver. Okay, it'll go in there if it's a little bigger than the hole. Copper soft. Okay, and then with that it'll be a much more secure fit, it's not going to come undone. If you're looking for more permanent, just solder it on there. Solder the connectors onto the pipe. Okay, I don't recommend doing that just because, you know, whatever. It, but if you want to do it, that's fine. 
What you could do is, and what I might do for more uh, secure application, is get two little detents, drill two holes here, like little half screws to put pressure, and I could tighten those just to keep the pipe steady in the tube. Uh, this is a piece of PEX pipe about 10 inches long or so using as a mounting arm. Uh, and what I'm going to do to mount it inside for now is take these and put one here, put one over there, and uh, then we're going to, you know, well, I might not even mount it inside just because then I'm going to undo it because I have a scanner antenna inside already. Uh, what I might do is make a uh, attachment so I could put this on uh, a tripod mast or something, put it about 20 feet up in the air. So again, this is for my personal use in the field. Most likely, I'm going to use it with my trunking scanner or with my Bearcat, but this is not going to be for inside the house. You could use it inside the house. I'm not going to use it in the house. I have a pretty decent indoor antenna that I'll talk about and show in another video. Um, but so yeah, probably what I'm going to do is actually tomorrow, I'm going to go and out, get the parts, build the mount, whatever, and uh, secure it, and we'll test it outside. Uh, other than that, it's great, fairly lightweight, and um, I, I have a J-Pole that I bought from a, from a fellow ham. I think the next antenna project I'm going to do is going to be a J-Pole, but I'm not sure. This one was so easy, and it cost like uh, about 30 bucks to do, 40 minutes to put it all together, and I have tested it out already. It... it, it it's not bad. I'll tell you right now. I, I'm I'm proud of myself. I, I I'm glad I finally got around to, to doing a project, my first home brew antenna, and I'm probably gonna make a lot more. It's definitely you know sure. It cost wise, I could have just gone out and freaking bought an antenna. All right, much more fulfilling to build it yourself. At least that's with me. Okay. Um, if you have any questions or anything else on these, and if you want me to build you one, you know I, I'll build you one for a little over cost. Again, I'm gonna. You know, I'm a, I'm not in the business of losing money, so I'll sell it to you affordable, but I'll, you know, I'll sell it to you whatever. I'll price it according to what other people are selling it for, because I guarantee you, go on eBay, whatever, people are selling the same shit for more than I probably would. Uh, in any regard, thanks for watching. Uh, please like, comment, share, subscribe, all the good stuff, and God bless America. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching.